In this video, I'll show you how to use rules and the workflow builder in Asana to customize the subtasks that are added to your form submissions. So here I have a simple form with three yes, no questions, marketing, speaker, and swag. And depending on how someone answers the questions, I will add different subtasks to the response. So here's marketing only, speaker only, swag only, and all three. All three has subtasks for all three sections assigned to the coordinator that was chosen in the form. Speaker only just has the speaker subtasks. Similarly, marketing only just has marketing and swag only just has the swag subtasks. I'll show you how I do that and with a full walkthrough right now. So let me jump into first an example of how not to do this and what some of the challenges are. And then I'll walk through how to build out uh, my solution. So in this other project here, um, I've set up um, a, the form that I already showed you and I've set up a few rules. So I've tried to just, the, the, the first thing you might think to do is create some rules like these. Um, and, and the one thing I didn't show, let me just show you the, the, the logical diagram first. Um, I also want to uh, assign some of these subtasks. I didn't do it in this project, but let, let's say I want to assign some of the subtasks based on who the coordinator is. So but what that looks like logically, um, you know, a new form submission comes in and Asana creates that task. If marketing is yes, then add marketing subtasks. If speaker is yes, add speaker subtasks and assign those to the coordinator. Uh, if swag is yes, add swag, swag subtasks. And then once that's all complete, pass it off to ready for review. Um, and these are the tasks I already showed you with um, all three sections or just one section. So that, that's kind of the lo logical flow that we're trying to create. So with those rules, let's look at what I did real quick. Um, so I, I made a rule. If marketing is yes, then add the marketing subtasks. So the, the heading and then the two tasks. Um, if swag is yes, add swag and the two tasks. And then I have two rules for um, speaker because if speaker is yes and coordinator is Anthony, then I'm going to add these three tasks and assign them to Anthony. And if speaker is yes and coordinator is Joanna, then I will add those subtasks and assign them to Joanna. So it seems like it'll work. So let's go ahead and submit the form. Um, let's do Anthony testing one. Uh, let's just go ahead and say yes to all three and you'll see why. Let's click submit. And if we pop back over into our project, here it is, Anthony testing one. Those rules are running. Subtasks are being added. We've got four, seven. Uh, so I think that's all of them. So let's take a look at this task and let's see what we get. So, so far so good. It's in the right project. Um, everything is, all the fields are linked to the, all the questions are linked to these fields. So I have all my data in here. I also have the data copied to the description. You don't have to do that. But now down in my subtasks, they're all out of order. And if you think about it, Asana created this task and changed all these values all at basically the same time. So all of these rules ran simultaneously in parallel. So instead of, in my logical flow, instead of looking like this, it was more like this. This is really what happened when Asana ran all of that. Um, so because these rules ran in parallel, they happened at the same time and they didn't come in in a nice clean order. So this is, this is what happened. So let's build something to avoid that. Um, and actually when you use the new workflow, it makes it a lot easier to do as well. So I'm gonna delete that task. And I'm also going to go in and delete these rules because um, they're not helping. So let's delete, delete. All right, so now I have a pretty clean slate. Again, the only, the only, the only thing that I pre-built was this form, um, but otherwise it's, an, it's a new project. Let's go over to workflow. So we see tasks are, are coming in manually and from this form. And first I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make some sections. Um, 
I, I should point out before we get into this, um, what makes all of this work that I'm going to do is two things. Yes, no questions make this a lot easier, and the questions have to be required. If these questions were optional, everything I'm going to do would break. Um, so you have to require a yes or a no answer, and you could do more complicated options. Uh, it just makes your work harder uh, or, or, or more complicated. So let's start adding some sections. Um, whoa, why can't I just double click that? Okay. So let's make a section marketing automation. Let's add another section speaker automation. Another section swag automation. Let's do ready for review. And then I don't need these for this part of the process, um, but it would be a good project to have in progress and a done. So this is my kind of project outline. Um, you know, I could go in, I could go in here and add a, a rule that says, you know, like done, you know, our, our standard task marked complete, move to done. That's a nice rule to have. Um, but let's focus on here. So new task comes in. Uh, I want to move it immediately to marketing automation because we're going to run through marketing automation, speaker automation, swag automation, and then um, and then it'll be ready for actual human review. So task added to this project, add it straight to marketing automation. So now a new, new task comes in, it's in here. Um, now I want to make some stuff happen to it. So let's add a rule um, based on, I don't want to set the custom field. Uh, I want to add subtasks. So it comes in here, we're going to add subtasks. And what did I say my subtasks were? Uh, so let's do tab N to get this marketing. Again, this is called a um, subtask as separator. So we've got marketing, and I'll do update template and respond to student. And this could be any tasks you want. You could assign due date, you know, relative due dates and assignees. I'm gonna leave those blank for right now. Um, and I'm just gonna check that box because I, I think it's nice. So this still adds subtasks, but I need one more thing because I only wanna add the subtasks if marketing is yes. So on the trigger, we have move, task moved. This will, this will trigger when task comes into marketing automation, and I'm going to rename that. Uh, and if marketing is yes, we'll create that rule. Uh, mark, I don't know why the cursor is not working there. Marketing. Um, so now we can see we have this rule. Task comes in, it's marked yes. Now we're kind of going to repeat that. Uh, oh, and I need to add, so I need to add. Task comes in, if it's yes, we add the subtasks, and we're going to move this to the next automation section, speaker automation, and we click save. Now that's the secret sauce that makes the subtasks not be intertwined with each other or, or interlaced with each other, because it's gonna add those three subtasks, then move it to speaker automation. And now we're basic, basically gonna repeat that prog process. Add subtasks, tab in, speaker, uh, schedule time with speaker, speaker confirmed, respond to student. Man, I got to delete this first one. Uh, and here's where uh, we're going to add a little extra logic. So I'm going to assign these to myself. Uh, and I will say, the speaker automation, I need I, w I only want to add these subtasks if speaker is yes, and I only want to assign it to me if the coordinator is Anthony. Then when all this is done, we're going to move it to another section, uh, speaker automation. And I do believe it's important that, um, I could be wrong, but I believe it's important to have the move to section after the subtasks. Uh, I don't know, I haven't tested that, but this works um, and logically, I'm assuming it's adding subtasks, then moving in sequence. So if I did it the other way, if I moved it, then added the subtasks, it could be right back where I started. So it is important to do subtasks first. Um, if by mistake you did move first, then add subtasks, you can just delete the add subtasks and then create a new one at the bottom. 
So I'll create that rule. Uh, I would technically duplicate this for Joanna. Um, so this is where it gets, it can, if you have a lot of customization you need to do, you need to customize this for every single person. Uh, it can be a little tedious. So tab in speaker, delete all that. Schedule time with speaker, speaker confirmed, respond to students. Let's set that. Boom, 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 okay. Uh, get rid of that first one. And again, after this happens, we're gonna move the task on to the next section, which is swag. And we wanna make sure this only triggers if speaker is, sorry, if speaker is yes, and if coordinator is Joanna. Um, and then I'll create that rule. And you notice when I do that, um, ah, here, here I made a mistake already. Uh, I moved this into itself. I need to go back and edit this one to move to swag automation. And what's really cool about this workflow view is that now I can see these two rules I created in speaker automation show up as two triggers move tasks into swag automation. So I can view that flow and I can do the same thing for marketing automation. So I can see new task comes in, goes into marketing, task moves to marketing and marketing is set, then it moves to speaker. Speaker, it comes into speaker, it's yes on speaker and it's Anthony, or it's speaker, yes, and Joanna, then it'll come into swag. Um, and then, so the last part, we're gonna add the subtasks for swag. Uh, so again, tab in, swag, delete, uh, create service now ticket and follow up with student, remove that, add assignees. You know, again, you can come back later and add those. Uh, only do this if swag is yes. And then uh, now there's no more automation sections to move to, but we do wanna move this to ready for review. And this is where someone would pick this ticket up and actually start taking action on it. Um, and again, this movement comes up here. Now I did miss what happens if you say no. Um, and so you do have to come in and add those rules as well. So we'll come into um, marketing automation. Here, I think it's easiest just to do custom action and say, if, it's, if the task comes into marketing automation, add another trigger and marketing is no, then we're just gonna move to the speaker automation section. Uh, and maybe it would make sense to title these sections like one, two, three. So it's a little easier when you're building this to see the sequence of steps. Um, but then if you're adding steps, you have to renumber it. So that's, you know, to each their own. So we'll do this again for speaker, custom action that comes in and, oops, oh, be a little careful that you don't choose actions when you want triggers add another trigger speaker is no and then we're just going to move it to swag and finally if it's in swag custom action add a trigger swag is no move to a section uh, ready for review and these no's help set up that whether it's yes or no it's going to move to the next step um, if it's yes it'll add those subtasks. If it's no, it's gonna not add the subtasks and just push it along. And, and this is also why for yes, no questions, it's pretty easy. If this was a dropdown of like year in school and you had, you know, year one, year two, year three, year four, you'd have to have five options. Um, so it can get pretty, pretty crazy pretty quickly. Um, but in the end, this will dump things out to ready for review. So let's test, let's test drive this and see how it works. Let's go back to our list view. Let's do a new form submission. Um, Anthony, submission two. Uh, again, let's just say yes to all of these. Try that out first. Who's your coordinator? Hit submit. Let's come in here and we should kind of see it run through the sections. Um, there's marketing automation, subtask, speaker, swag, and ready for review. And if we open this up, here we have are three sections, marketing, speaker, swag, and the speaker ones are assigned to me. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted. So we can come back 
and try this again. Let's do a submission three. Let's say no, yes, no, and Joanna. I'll confuse her by creating some tasks for her in Asana, but she won't know what they are. Here we go, kind of zips through. And ready for review. So now we just get the speaker tasks and they're assigned to Joanna instead of to me. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. The last thing I would probably do since these automation steps are purely automation and once this project is set and running, you don't need them anymore. You don't need to think about them. I'd probably move them down to below done um, so that they're kind of out of your way and you don't think about them. Um, as this project fills up, you're going to be working up in here in the ready for review, the in progress and the done sections. Um, Maybe you'll add more steps to your process, however things go. Um, but this way, those are you don't really see those and they don't take up space at the top. It does change the workflow. So now those steps move to the back of your workflow, um, which I think makes it less intuitive when you're building this out. When building it, it's nice to have them at the front. Um, but once you've set it all up, I think it's fine to push them to the back and kind of ignore them. Um, and yeah, just be aware that everything starts back here. So that's, that's my solution to adding subtasks to forms in Asana, um, and doing it conditionally based on the responses in the form. Let me know what you think, if this is helpful, uh, if you're looking for any other Asana or automation tips, uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe. Um, and again, if this is helpful, drop me a like or a comment. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you.